is Nisreen's Art World. In this podcast, I will share my thoughts about different art firms such as films, books, paintings, performing art, etc. Hello, this is Nisreen. Welcome to the 13th episode of my podcast. It's lovely to speak to you again. Today, I'd love to focus on my favorite performing art firm again, belly dancing. I've been teaching and performing belly dance for years now. The term belly dance is a Western one for dance firms that originate in Middle Eastern, North African, Hellenic and Turkic countries. In Arabic, belly dance is called raks shaki. In Turkish, it's known as oriental dance or oyun havasi. In the second episode of this podcast, I talked about the Turkish belly dancer called Tulay Karasha. This time, I will feature another iconic dancer and actress, Samia Gamal, one of my first dance idols. When I first watched her dance with a beautiful sheer veil in the film, I was totally mesmerized by her ethereal presence. I didn't have much knowledge about the dance firm back then, but I could immediately tell she was a unique artist. So, who is Samia Gamal? Samia Gamal was born in Upper Egypt, 1924. As a teenager, she began her dance career as an extra member of the dance troupe under Badia Masabni the best-known entertainer of the times. She then found her way into the film industry as many other famous bay dancers did at the time. She was active in the cinema industry as a dancer and an actress from the 1940s to the early 1970s. This time period was called the golden era of Egyptian bay dance. In this episode, I'd love to focus on five elements that make her particularly distinguishable as a performer. I will also share her videos on my blog. I hope you enjoy it. One, lively shoulder and hand movement. When I think of Samia Gamal, I always think of her shrugging her shoulders a little bit and shaking her shoulders in a playful way. The shoulder movement and continuous hand waving are Samia Gamal's signature moves. Once you see them, you won't forget them, because they're so charming. If you compare her to other stars from the same era in Egypt, such as Naima Akef, Tahir Karioka, and Nawabia Mustafa, you will notice how Samia Gamal's upper body movement stands out, with its fluidity and liveliness. Other dancers from the same time period tended to emphasize their hip work more while using their hands to frame their hips. I believe the Hollywood actor Rita Hayworth referred to Gamal's flowy hand movements prior to her Bay dance inspired performance in the film Salome in 1953. No offense to the beautiful Hayworth, but seeing her rather awkward Bay dance taught me how skillful as a dancer Gamal was. She just made it look easy. 2. Artistic Self-Presentation Samia Gamal often showed up on screen with veils, either attached to her sleeves or as a separate piece of fabric. By today's standards, she may not appear to do flashy techniques with the veils. However, the way she used sheer piece of fabric to accentuate her motions was iconic. Behind or in front of the veils, she looked like a fairy princess. The same goes for her way of handling her flared chiffon skirts. She intentionally created beautiful shapes and movement in her costume as she stepped. Some pointed out the influence of her training in Western dance forms such as ballet and ballroom dance. Her presentation skills with her costumes and props also made her shine on screen. 3. Earthy and characteristic hip work. Gamal's dance style is often described as fluid and lifted. However, it doesn't mean that she didn't have the earthy trait 
which is common in many Egyptian dances. If you look at her lower body movement closely, you will notice how she's following the downbeat of the music most of the time, rather than the melodies. She often steps back diagonally on the beat, layering hip techniques on top of the steps. This may be the general characteristic of the time. Her hip work was fluid and hit the accents when really needed. This relaxed approach may come across quite differently to the intricate and precise hip work, which became one of the main attractions in modern day dance performances after the 1990s. 4. Iconic Travelling and Leaning Samya Gamal also often travels across the floor with a step called arabesque. It's a little backwards kicking movement, very different from the arabesque in ballet. There are also cases in which she just drags the last step a little bit with a quick, quick, slow rhythm. And sometimes she leans slightly forwards as she slows down. This adds not only a coquettishness, but also dynamic, spontaneous feel to the travelling steps. In fact, I see similar leaning in the dancers from younger generations, such as Dina. I wonder if she was inspired by Gamal. Finally, 5. Expression of Sensuality Most of the video footages of her dancing we can access today are from films. So, of course, she acts while dancing too. She conveys sorrow, joy, defiance, and sensuality very naturally with her face. I am aware that there is a trend in the international bay dance community today to idealize the golden era dancers like Gamal as, quote, demure and classy unlike those vulgar sexual dancers today, unquote. But if we pay attention to the plot of the films, we will notice that those actresses were also presented as sex symbols in most cases, even though the expression of sexuality may be quite subtle to the modern audience's eyes. For example, in the films such as Alibaba and the Forty Thieves from 1942 and Little Miss Devil from 1949, Gamal's role is mostly about seduction and flirtation. Her dance is presented as part of the seduction. We also need to consider that the social status of the dancers in Egyptian society was and remains low, no matter how famous they are. For example, she had an 11-year relationship with a singer and composer, Farid El Atrash, who never married her. According to some, this is because he was from a Syrian royal family and he could not defile his family by marrying a Mia dancer. Though, of course, we never know what was going on with their relationship. I think it's worth paying attention to that being a dancer could be a deal breaker. It makes me realize how courageous she was to express her sensuality through her dancing so openly and beautifully despite the social pressure. What did you think? I'd be delighted if you write a review of this podcast on Apple Podcasts or rating on Spotify. It'd be lovely if you share this episode on social media as well. And of course, you're more than welcome to let me know your thoughts from the contact form in the description. Thank you so much for listening. Goodbye for now.